All right, guys, good morning. I apologize for the gravel. I'm still a little under the weather, and it's still pretty early here, so I'm still waking up. That being said, I am sure a lot of you guys have seen this New York Times hit piece article about Assassin's Creed Shadows and the Black Samurai Yasuke. And again, this came out about a week and a half ago, back on September 11th. Not everybody has actually seen this article. That being said, it's been pointed out by a lot of people, including that Park Place and Smash JT, that the person in this article who is quoted as a, quote, you know, Japanese expert, Japanese uh, consultant, saying that none of these people complaining about the game are actually Japanese citizens, was a Sweet Baby Inc. employee. And of course, you see that this article says, in the first seconds of a trailer promoting the video game Assassin's Creed Shadows, a ninja emerges from the woods. Suddenly, the camera shifts towards a riverside village of thatched roof hidden in the mountains, suggesting that the story will unfold in feudal Japan. Seconds later, another warrior appears in the flames of a destroyed settlement. It's the game's other protagonist, a black samurai named Yasuke. Some gamers erupted over his appearance, convinced that the franchise is known for its immersive reactions of the past, oh sorry, recreations, had quote, gone woke by including a black character in its depiction of 16th century Japan. Elon Musk, oh yeah, the bad man himself, magnified the debate with a social media post saying it was an example of how DEI kills art, using an acronym for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Game developers received personal attacks and death threats during an online harassment campaign, none of which I have ever personally seen. And I'm not saying that they're not out there, but I'm telling you what, I have not seen a single death threat or threat of violence during this entire scenario. Although grounded in history, experts say that Yasuke was possibly enslaved as a child before arriving in Japan, later ascended to the samurai class during the Sengoku period. Again, not true. Even if he was given a sword or a pension or even like uh, the position of a retainer, you could not become a samurai in less than 15 months. Historically inaccurate. Then you see that it says um, down here, but the outcry over Assassin's Creed Shadows has been considerably louder. The inclusion of Yasuke was the primary complaint, but observers also pointed to the presence of Chinese architecture and period inappropriate flags. Yeah, the game is a botched mess. The historical inaccuracies, architectural inaccuracies, stealing uh, the flags from recreation groups, reenactment groups, is absolutely insane behavior by Ubisoft. And again, it just shows how lazy and inept they really are. Kazuma Hashimoto, a Japanese consultant and translator in the video game industry, said the reception of Assassin's Creed Shadows was mostly positive in Japan. It was people in the West who were upset with seeing Yasuke as a samurai, he said, explaining that many of the negative online comments written in Japanese appeared to have been roughly translated from English. You know, newsflash, people all over the world, I'm sure, have bad grammar. You cannot definitively point to anything and say, oh, this was clearly translated from English to Japanese, just really roughly by Google or whatever. Yu Hirayama, oh yeah, this guy we've talked about before, a historian at the Japan University of Health Sciences who specializes in the Sengoku period, said that Yasuke's samurai status was not in question. There are very few historical documents about him, but there's no doubt he was a samurai. Again, making a point to say that even though we can't prove he was a samurai, it definitely, definitely happened. Now again, about this consultant character, because uh, Smash JT pointed out to the, uh, the author of the article from the New York Times that he forgot to list Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, in the bio as having been someone he worked for in the past. And so, of course, uh, you see he says, Hey, Zachary Small, again, who wrote the article, were you aware that this individual you used as a source is actually a Ubisoft industry plant pushing a false agenda in your New York Times article? Will you be retracting the story in the name of honest and professional journalism and issuing a statement on this? Of course not. These guys will cover for Sweet Baby Inc. every chance they get. And of course, you can see, again, the consultant who worked at Sweet Baby Inc., Kazuma Hashimoto, locked his account, says he wrote at Polygon, IGN, Silicon Era, Games Radar, them. Um, I'm surprised he doesn't have he, him in his bio. But you can see right here listed that he did freelance work for three years at Sweet Baby Inc. And of course... Um, once again, they just say Japanese consultant, translator in the video game industry said the reception of Assassin's Creed Shadows was mostly positive. No mention of Sweet Baby Inc., but it gets even better. Now he has admitted that apparently working for Sweet Baby Inc. or even saying that he worked for them is affecting his ability to get work. Pretty crazy stuff. I mean, we're seeing like the whole consequences for your actions thing in real time happening. And of course, this is funny because everybody on the left or people in the media want to say, oh, you know, if you get canceled, that's not cancel culture. It's just consequences for your actions. It's like, okay, what about this? So in a recent Twitch stream during, discovered by YouTuber SmashJT, Hashimoto provided more details about the New York Times saying, a couple months ago, the New York Times actually got in touch with me to ask about Assassin's Creed, in which I was like, yeah, reception's honestly kind of positive. And a lot of the comments you'd see under videos were straight up Google Translate comments, which is pretty obvious. 
However, he then noted how annoyed the Japanese people are with certain aspects of the game. And the people are annoyed with some of the inconsistencies and issues with shadows, which is the buildings and stuff being wrong or certain clothing and whatnot, right? Or the fact that the art team basically stole a sign from a reenactment troupe in Japan. And again, that was the Sakigahara Tempo Corps. And that's actually like pretty common because when you're working with such a large team of artists, well, sometimes they're sort of given the direction to Google things and people make mistakes, he elaborated. It's more like you're working with a team of people that speak multiple different languages and whether or not they communicate with each other is an issue and that's just become part of the game development. And that's another problem that I see. Obviously, there are times where collaborations between people of different countries, different backgrounds across the world on a massive game are possibly required, especially if you have to outsource for somebody who does something that you don't do in your own studio. But imagine this, you're making a game that's supposed to be set in feudal Japan that has a heavy emphasis on historical accuracy and that always has in the series. And yet you hire people who don't even speak the same languages to Google images or Google designs for characters and, and uh, time periods that they know nothing about or cultures they know nothing about. What a cluster. I mean, what a complete brain dead move. Later in the stream, Hashimoto claimed he did not work on Assassin's Creed Shadows. Again, I think this is damage control. He said, I can say that I didn't do any consultation work on Assassin's Creed Shadows. The stuff I did with Sweet Baby, I'll probably never be able to talk about because of the way game development works. So yeah, it's really, really weird. I have a feeling I'm going to get blamed for changes and decisions made on a game that I worked on that weren't even alike, that I didn't even know was about or wasn't even aware of or not even part of, he shared. Because when you're a consultant, they just kind of pull you in and ask you for like suggestions or whether or not the suggestions are actually taken is up to the director. It's up to the director. People don't understand how much power a director and producer have in a studio or whether or not they'll facilitate those changes. Still later in the same stream, he revealed that developers do not want to hire him given that he was a former Sweet Baby Inc. employee. Uh oh He said, there are definitely jobs that I've had where people have seen the fact that I worked for Sweet Baby and it's been a year since I worked with them and it's just like a contractual basis when I was so, uh, just like periodically for like a couple years. People will literally, sorry, this guy says like a lot. People will literally be like, hey, we are going to get harassed for hiring you and I think that really sucks. That instead of like, we'll protect our employee, the employer or the potential person giving you the contract will be more concerned about that than protecting their employees, kind of effed up. Interestingly, this appears to contradict Kim Blair's recent comments during an appearance on the Black Girl Gamers YouTube channel. And if you remember this, this is the video that they got Smash JT copyright struck over. This is the video that they locked comments on, they disabled likes, uh, dislikes on. Pretty crazy behavior by these women. She said, I think annoying is a very good word for it because largely it doesn't materially affect our work. The vast majority of these companies already know what's going on and they still hire us. Yeah, well, not anymore, Kim. Clearly, people are sick and tired of having these people in the industry or representing their companies, representing their games, knowing what an effect it'll have, what a negative effect it'll have on sales, on the perception as a whole in the, uh, the industry by gamers when it comes to the time to release your game. So I'm going to leave it right there. Let me know what you think about all this, guys. Are we finally seeing the end of people using companies like Sweet Baby Inc.? If what this guy is saying is true and developers are saying, look, we'd hire you, but you have this, this, you know, black, uh, this blemish on your resume. And this is something that we don't, we can't overlook because people are going to find it. So let me know what you think about all this and I will catch you later. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.